In this lesson, we'll cover streams in Node.js and how they can handle data from IO operations within your programs. So a stream is simply a collection of data, just like an array or a string. So it could be a sequence of characters or numbers or even objects. The difference is that you might not initially be able to access all of the data within a stream as either the data hasn't arrived at its destination yet or that you're dealing with massive amounts of data and it's simply a bad idea to handle that amount of data at any one time. So in this lesson we'll just dip our toes into what streams are and a potential use for them and in future lessons we'll come across streams and how they can be really useful especially when dealing with our asynchronous IO operations. So you'll come across streams when you're dealing with input output and especially with things like the file system and the HTTP module because they're predominantly to do with dealing with data that's sent to files or network sockets. They fit into that category that we earlier described where the data hasn't actually arrived at its destination yet. So let's run through an example. I've just recreated the web server code that we had from a few lessons ago where we just sent some basic HTML, but this time instead of just sending a short line of text, we're actually going to read some data from a file. And if we inspect the hello.html file, you can see that the file is actually 201 megabytes in size. So that's quite a hefty file and you wouldn't really want that coming over your 3G connection. So it's a little bit of a contrived example, but it'll help illustrate how streams work within Node.js. And if we just examine the first few lines of that file, You'll see it's just a heading level one tag with hello world repeated over and over again. So let's try and serve this file now. And we'll pop over to our web browser to load it up. When we try and load the page, you'll see we start getting our markup straight away, but the page is still loading because there's so much content to load. And if I actually try and inspect some of this with my developer tools, you'll see Chrome becomes quite sluggish because of the memory that's being used until the point where it becomes so unresponsive that it's probably going to crash and I'll need to restart Chrome. So let's actually just stop that connection now and kill the server from Visual Studio Code. So a better way to handle this problem would be to read the hello.html file as a stream and basically only read a small section of that at a time and then pass it directly to the result object which is actually a stream itself and we can do that by using a create read stream function instead of our read file function on our file system object. And the create read stream function from our file system module actually returns an object which we store inside of a variable called file and that object provides us a function called pipe, which we just pass in the value of result, which connects these two streams together. So in essence, what's happening is we're reading the contents of the hello.html file bit by bit, and then passing it directly to the result stream, which is the method of sending data back to the web server. So let's run that file again, and send the request with Chrome. So let's refresh the page. And although the page does take a little bit of time to load still, when you actually use your developer tools, they are far more responsive now because we haven't had to load all of that content into memory, or at least we haven't had to load the whole file in in one go because the document object model or the DOM has been loaded by gradually receiving data from the file. So as mentioned previously, modules that make use of input and output, such as the file system, the net and HTTP modules, all provide access to streams to enable us to work with large amounts of data. There are also a few other modules, such as the Zlib module, which is used for compression, and the crypto module, which is used for cryptography, which also make use of streams. And we'll take a look at the crypto module in the next lesson.